You know what? I'm gonna tell you guys. So I've done this. I'm working on this show that I've um, interviewing people because you're all always interviewing me, and I switched the role in interviewing people. So I had this very interesting discussion with one of the. Um, people that I'm not going to reel right now about neutral mentality and that was kind of an interesting point that not necessarily where you you know when when shit happens to you and you and you're like oh let's be positive let's be positive like you, it's sometimes impossible to be positive so being neutral just not going into negativity is very useful it's very simple it's very hard to do because it's a constant work but it's very uh, very very useful so I feel like I've started there and then I start to shift into a better energy. So I don't necessarily think of just positive, I just think about being in the moment, taking, taking whatever comes as it is, and I always know that I'm, I know how, how, I am in, how I'm in control of how I'm gonna feel about any situation. How did you close some of those big matches? Were you focused like on your changeover? Were you focused on this is what I need to do? Or was it more, I just got to find a way to win? Or was it more specific? I'm asking you. A lot of times, I think it also depends um, sometimes on your emotional state. When you're really confident, it's almost like you don't think. It's like everything is very quiet and it's like, I know what I gotta do. I don't necessarily think what I have to do. Like, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna trust my body. And I, I've done that before. I've done that before. I know how to do it. Remember what, what are the specifics that you're doing when you are uh, in that moment where you're closing the match? When, when I was down and I knew I had to get back, it's like I, I had this, Always, I kept telling myself, like, if you have one more point, you have a chance to make a difference. So no matter what it is, you just have to try. You just have one more chance, at least one more chance to make a difference. And it may work, may not work. All the matches that I've lost is was I didn't take the chance and my opponent did. It fascinated me the neutrality of what you were talking about. You're one of the best athletes in the world. You've been number one in the world. You've won multiple grand slams and yet even trying to explain what positive is, is it cringe, you know, it's all over the place. Uh, you know, Vig, I think it's really powerful, kind of what you said, because negativity is 70 times more powerful than positivity. Sasha, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me on your show, Vika. I am so excited to chat with you. Do you ever feel scared? Because I hear about myself. What about you being fearless? You know, you're fearless. And it's really far from the truth. I fear going on the court. I fear to lose sometimes. I fear, I fear a lot of things. What makes me fearless is that my fear is not gonna stop me from going and still doing those things. I'll break my leg if I fall here or like start imagining the consequences of what happens if like something bad happens and then it can almost like lead to this moment where you can't act and you can't move because you're too stunned by the like negative and what I always try and channel my mind back to is like thinking in the moment and like thinking about my next move in a positive like advantageous way of like, this is what I need to do to get out of this situation. This is what I need to do to succeed in this moment. I know you've talked a lot about being uh, held hostage. What was the moment that changed you know was it one moment that it was like you know what i'm just gonna try to change my life and try to, to to do healthy and use that experience or was that something that took you more steps 
Definitely a few steps. So I would say, you know, I was held hostage entering my senior year at NYU. And a year later, when I was in law school is when I started to really think, oh, wow, I might, I have trauma I haven't dealt with. And it really was, I mean, it was literal and figurative steps. I saw a pair of shoes in my closet and I thought, all right, I'm just going to jog a mile. I'm going to walk to class today and then I'm going to jog and then I'm going to run. And then I signed up for a 10 K and then a marathon and ultra marathon. But the, it was the, it was the small iterative process that I just kept showing up to do a little bit more and a little bit more. I always felt that I perform better under pressure. That's what excites me. Like when it's pressure, when there's a go time, I want to go there, even though it's uncomfortable and, and, and everything, but I want to be there. I don't know if it's the same with fear or pressure. So I want to see how you see that. I think that they're related. I, I agree. I think pressure can be good for us, especially when we have tactics and processes for dealing with the pressure, right? So we, we develop like a stress resiliency. Like we know, okay, I've, I've handled it and then when and, and also to recognize when we're reaching the top and we can't handle it, right? So it's like that balancing act. But as ambitious people, we're always like pushing it a little bit more and more and more. Um, but I think that the pressure can be a catalyst for fear and the fear can create more pressure that might not even be there. So it's interesting how we have to have, again, it goes back to unpacking that conversation. I do think outside pressure can be very, very helpful, but I think it has to align with what our goals are. Sometimes we're receiving pressure from opinions or communities that have no relevance into our innate value system and goals. And that I think is an important distinction.